So thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to jump straight into it. Yeah, I've been in Sydney for about 10 years now. I'm working on the accent. It is abysmal. Next year, I'm sure I'll be able to wow you with one. Um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Canvas and reflections and student publishing, just keeping in mind when I say student publishing, for me that is blogs and I'll use that interchangeably throughout. So for me, student publishing um, is blogs. Over the last couple of weeks, it's our, it's our winter in uh, Sydney right now, so I've been traveling around on a little winter holiday and talking to friends about I'm, I'm going to present at this conference. And in talking to them, it's actually um, sort of uh, brought up another uh, advantage beyond just the advantages that students have with reflecting and publishing, I realized in talking to my friends that actually what this does is it actually gives me uh, a new way of teaching. So, so as I'm, I'm presenting this to you with this idea that the students are going to benefit you know, greatly from it, and they do, but what I now realize is that uh, by having genuine, authentic uh, publishing happening and reflection in my classes, it actually makes me a very nimble, um, very, uh, I'm ready to change my lessons and the way that I approach things. Uh, very quickly. So um, I'm going to present it to you sort of in what, what's happened in the last couple years at Newington College uh, in terms of setting up a program uh, which started with the first step which would be um, having a rationale. So my first suggestion when you think about having a program of uh, blogging with your students and reflection is to ground it in something. I think um, I, I'm actually I'm one of those people who I was, uh, I was against blogging for many years didn't really see the value, uh, and I've learned that I think where, that, where the value was lost is that I saw it as something to add to my class as another task or another assignment. Uh, it's only when uh, I began to, uh, when I first looked at it as something that had to be tied to a framework or to a standard. That's what gave the, gave the, the appropriate structure for me to succeed with my students. So this is the learning framework that we as a faculty in my school came up with in conjunction with the students. And it simply answers the question, uh, where do we want to see our year 12 boys? It's an all boys school, by the way. Uh, where do we want to see these boys at year 12? So we'd like to see them as reflective learners, as inquisitive learners, and as self-directed learners. And then it breaks down into um, some other categories under each of those. Around the outside are simply ways that we could use our teaching and learning to bring them to that point. Um, every year, at the beginning of the school year, uh, we as teachers have to, have to come up with a professional learning goal for that year. And that professional learning goal drives what conferences or workshops or online courses we take to fulfill that goal. So I chose uh, two years ago to look at reflective because I, I really, I, I get the self-directed and the inquisitive, but I felt this is the one that we pay the most lip service to without really, I mean, the question becomes in our classes, when do we have time? for reflection, or from unit to unit, when do we actually take the time to stop before we move into our new unit for students to actually reflect? So that became my goal, and out of, out of that goal or foundation, um, I, I began to look at how to implement blogging. So my first uh, advice would be to find some type of uh, framework or standard. Uh, we have the Australian uh, ETSL standards. Um, I don't know, you know what, what you have exactly, but I know Every few years, you have to complete a certain number of hours and prove you know, to maintain your accreditation. So another option would be for you to take a look at the standards that are used for your accreditation. The easiest one is the ICT standard, clearly. Uh, I, I would assume everyone has one of those as part of their accreditation. Um, but in going through the standards last year, I wanted to link it to not just my learning framework, but also to the standards uh, for accreditation. And I found this one, which is uh, standard 5.2 which is to provide feedback um, to students on their learning. And when I read that, it kind of jumped out at me. Because I, I can, I'm an English teacher. Uh, I can write comments in the margins. In Canvas, I certainly fill it up with comments in SpeedGrader. But it actually dawned on me, how can I give really authentic feedback to my students when I don't know where they are with their own learning? I'm just assuming. Uh, and so that's what made reflection and blogging sort of come to life for me. So uh, my first advice is to try to figure out what's that sweet spot, what's that, what's that grounding to actually make the, the program work. Um, I feel without it, 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 could, it could possibly fail. Um, the second step is to choose the platform that you want to use in your school. I am in no way promoting WordPress. And in fact, we're also a Google school. We have access to, uh, is it Blogspot or a Blogger? Uh, and in fact, when we first started, 
we actually said to the students, you can actually use any blog program you want because Canvas is agnostic towards you know, what, what, it, what it takes in, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, we only settled on WordPress because it had uh, the best functionality for us to bulk create 20, 30, 50, 100 blogs at once. Uh, it was the easiest one for us to do that in. And secondly, the admin panel seemed to be very sort of intuitive and easy for us. So we've done the, we've done the first step, which is the rationale, and then we've chosen the, um, the actual uh, platform. Uh, what do you think would be the next, the next step or challenge? Just call out, what do you think? Setting it up. Well, we can set it up with the WordPress. So we've covered that step. What do you think is the next big hurdle? Huh? Teaching the students. The biggest question, I think one of the biggest roadblocks we have to actually implementing a real, a real longitudinal you know, blog program over the years is how are we going to onboard the students? None of us have time in our classes. When you just think about, I've got, I've got to teach them how to blog, I've got to teach them WordPress, I've got content I need to cover. So that is the next big step. Uh, Canvas kicked in with Commons, and that's one of, the, one of the biggest tools that we've been using to help us get uh, students and other teachers on board. And the way it worked is that I simply realized I needed to create a module, a Canvas module that I could then upload to the Canvas Commons. Any of my classes I teach, I can pull it down for that class and run through it with that class, or I could have other teachers pull it down and run through it in that way. Um, the module is divided up into um, just a short introduction that we want the boys to know, uh, and then uh, a student, um, student guidelines, uh, as well as just a, a brief setup of directions of how to actually you know, participate in the blog, and then a knowledge check, which is either a Kahoot or a Canvas quiz. So I'll go through those really quickly. The first step, of course, was that time you have to take to tell your students about publishing, we cut it way down. Um, this is actually the second version. The first version was everything you need to know about blogging, and, and it was almost like um, Josh Coates said last night, I don't remember the acronym, but it was too much information, and who really cares, right? So this is my version of cutting that down. We wanted the students to know uh, intuitively. They know they're writing something online. I don't really need to reiterate that. I just want them to take away that you're not invisible, and nothing's ungoogleable. That's it. And that takes care of the introduction to blogging for us. And remember, this is, these are all parts of the module that I'm using. Second step is a set of guidelines. Again, this is version two. Version one was a long scrolling page of do's and don'ts and expectations, and I was bored with it as well. And what I realized is that I know your school, my school, we all have a privacy policy, we have child protection policies, we've got ICT policies for staff, ICT policies for student. We've got just about everything covered. So I scrapped the original, guide, uh, the original uh, policy that I was working for weeks on. They said, we'll just come up with some guidelines Everything else should be covered in what we already have. Um, and the guidelines, I think the key to the guidelines that I created were they have to be in the student's language. You know, uh, the, the be careful uh, what you post. Um, don't even think about putting out personal information. My favorite, you have the right to absolutely nothing, which is, which is the truth. And they get that. And so coming up with the guidelines was the second step. Uh, and then, as you can see here, this is a scrolling page. This is the only thing we give them in terms of classroom instruction on the blogs. And of course, because it's on Canvas, you can actually say, go home and look at it. Where to log in? Now, this is the only time we tell them your student number is your blog name. We just show them this image. You'll have this page. And you need to create categories. And you need to create tags. And that's it. So the instruction or the onboarding can be, uh, it certainly doesn't take a full class period for my classes. Uh, and it's a pretty good, I think it's a pretty solid way of uh, onboarding them onto uh, the program. Um, looking at time, uh, uh, I do have a Kahoot, but everything could really fall apart. You know, those of you who know a Kahoot. Um, if you want, if you take out your devices and go to kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T, those of you who want to. So as you can see, those of you who may or may not have seen a Kahoot, it's simply a trivia uh, activity game uh, that you can use in the classroom that serves for us as the second reinforcement of what we expect for them. 
There's about five or six more questions. Uh, and that's how we use that. Let me see if I can do this and take us back. Yay. Um, so for those of you who, or for the teachers who feel as if the Kahoot is too youthful, um, in Canvas, they have the option of actually using the Canvas quiz instead. It's the same questions that you saw in the Kahoot. Um, I, I, I guarantee you the energy level of a room in a Kahoot in year 12 is the same as year seven. Uh, it's just as good. But we give the teachers the option, so I've given them that option to do that. And the only difference in using the Canvas quiz is that you get to give more robust feedback to your students. So we've set up the rationale. Uh, we've actually chosen our, our platform, and now we've actually onboarded the students. So now it gets into the fun part, which is really what, what, are, the, what are the parameters that we have for uh, uh, having students uh, participate in the actual blog. Um, for those of you who haven't used, who, is anyone, uh, who has used the uh, submit HTML submission task? Let me see your hands. About half of us. Yes, yeah, submit, yes, sorry, HTML. Submit URL. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the whole key for us in integrating uh, blogs uh, into Canvas. Uh, that submitting the URL allows us to, as you see here, um, there it is, website URL. It gives us the opportunity to collate all of the blogs of your classes into one place in the speed grader. And if you organize your modules in a certain way, you can actually keep all of your um, student publishing reflection uh, tasks into one module. So that is the key for us, and that's what we'll be taking a look at how we leverage the speed grader uh, for the blogging. Um, you can see here, once the students have uh, posted their blog, they've posted the URL to their assignment, speed grader collates it, and then you simply click to the next student and the next student. And you're simply sitting in one place reading rather than going off in multiple directions trying to keep up with everyone's blog. Um, I've highlighted up there a little tip that I've learned in terms of my responding to students. Uh, in every blog post or every uh, submission through SpeedGrader, it gives you these two links up at top. And one of the links is to go to, uh, to view this in a new window, and the second one is to actually go to the live blog itself. The great thing about the, the link that allows you to see the live blog itself is if you click on that link, you stay in Canvas, and it pops open a window in front of Canvas of the actual blog. And the reason why I use that is because I think it's incredibly important for us to actually give feedback to the actual blog post. That gives it another level of authenticity, really. Um, but being a Canvas user, I really like to have all of my interactions and comments to students inside of Canvas. So if you use that second link, have, it, have your uh, screen, have your, uh, the actual blog post there for you to respond to, then you simply copy before you hit post or afterwards and paste your, your comments into um, the canvas, which I've done there. And so it appears in both places. Um, always, always, always after, the, the key to actually getting authentic reflection is to begin to mold and guide the student responses. Guarantee you the first reflection that any student does will be formal and will bore you to tears. It's terrible. So I always assign the first blog, and then I come to class and tell them how terrible it was. Uh, and I remind them that the blog, it needs to be in your language. I don't want grammar. I don't want uh, punctuation. It's the only place in my class. You can use emoticons. I don't care. I want to hear from you. And believe it or not, that's what really opens it up. You get the truth. I get more wit, pithy comments, sarcasm. I get the best, the best responses when I allow them to just speak to me through their blog. And that's, I think, probably the biggest takeaway I can give you. If you want authentic reflection to happen, you've got to let them do that. This is interesting, though, because this is, this is yet another a task for them, which is when you're commenting on other people's posts, I do want grammar, I want respect, I want all these different things. So I, I think it's important to keep in mind that you have to continue to have different types of tasks in order to mold the responses that you want to get from your students. Um, so this is uh, my home page of my class this year. Uh, and of course, it changes with each unit of study the image does. But that, that table at the bottom stays there all year long. Um, and all I've done is at the beginning of the year, last year actually, I asked 
my students, I put up a content page that they could edit. And I said, tonight, everyone, I want you to, I, put, I think I put a table up. I want everyone to put your name and your uh, URL of your blog address. And then I created a table on the home page and just copied and pasted. And this allows the students to visit each other's blogs easily and for parents if they want to uh, visit uh, other students' blogs as well. Um, I don't use it because all, I'm using the speed grader as my vehicle into what they have. Um, and in fact, once you do it one year, I've just copied and pasted the table from last year into this year's class and just edited it. So it's, it's a real, real good time saver. This, I know it's hard to, to see, but what I really wanted to show you is um, one of the things we have to do is figure out different uh, prompts for the students. So the first prompt is a, is a prompt that's really, you know, I have a bullet list of things I want them to cover. And the first line says, I don't want to see one, two, three, or bullets back. I want you to write in paragraph four. Um, the second one is a um, poetry exam uh, uh, reflection, pre-exam pre reflection, which I'll talk about more in just a minute. Um, but the last one is a, an example of uh, making thinking visible. Is anyone, does anyone, is anyone familiar with those types of routines? Thinking of types of routines that we always already use in our classes, um, visible thinking is a great one for trying to get real reflection from our students. And so I try to vary the prompts in order to, to make sure that I'm getting uh, what we want. Uh, my favorite uh, format for uh, setting up reflection for the students is, for example, here, the day we finish Macbeth. We close the play, and I have them do a reflection. And it's a really interesting reflection because at the end of Macbeth, it's a completely different experience than the first day that they started when they couldn't understand the language and they had no idea what's happening. It's, it's really rich and interesting and they're, they're most often really proud of themselves and surprised that they actually liked it. And of course, it's, they're, they're all boys, it's got blood and gore, and, you know, they, of course they love it. But then they're given a, an assessment or an exam. Once those exams are marked, they're handed back to the boys. On that day, we have an in-class uh, reflection. And they have to look at their marks and the comments from the teachers and determine you know, where, where's that gap in learning. And most often, to a T, most boys are deflated at that point. So in that blog, in that reflection, I have them not, not only note that, but I ask them to now look at your previous uh, pre-exam reflection and take the information from there and compare where you really are. Tell me where you really are. And it's that moment that really, I mean, it's, I'm getting chills right now, because I, I just love seeing them actually say, wait a minute, I, I actually do know what I, I, I know what I know. You can't take that away from me on an exam. You know, I was here, and, and for the first time, many of them, for the first time, actually see their learning happening. And seeing assessment as for what it is, it's just a way for us to standardize, or I don't know, I don't want to get into that conversation. But um, that's one of my best, so, or favorite uh, ways of, of stimulating the reflection. I can't read that, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> um, I think these are just uh, different ways. This was an end of, end of unit, uh, an end of unit reflection where for this one, I did want to know what they know, but um, because it's, it, we have a unit in year 10 in, in our school, which is the ugly face of race and prejudice, which is really fascinating to teach in Australia. Uh, so every year at the end of that unit, I want to know exactly how I'm teaching what's working for them, what's not working for them. And this was an example of that. And these were some, uh, these were some of the responses that we got. And, and this is where I become the nimble teacher, because this is where I learned that I spent too much time on thesis statements and not enough time on analyzing a particular scene. Or uh, I tried to squeeze in, I think, To Kill a Mockingbird, and I still had the movie Crash and all this other stuff. And so I said to the boys that I, you know, next year, I promise you, I won't. I won't teach To Kill a Mockingbird with crash and this other stuff. And, and the boys wrote back and said, no, you got to find a way to actually include that, you know, even if you truncate it. So, I mean, it really, this is only after, of course, we're able to get them to open up and give us uh, authentic uh, responses. So, um, how am I doing on time? Good. So, I just wanted to also just sort of, in, in, sort of talk to you about an end of the year project, because I think one of the best ways to actually get blogs en masse, you know, up and running is to hit as many students as you can at, at one time. So if you can combine classes, or in our case, year sevens, I, I, I don't know if you'll have the same issue at the end of the school year, 
But in Australia, it's massive, huge exams, you know, about three weeks before the end of school. The whole, you know, it's cohorts and they sit into a hall and they just, it's really insane. But the last three weeks of school, there's not much content happening because they're not being marked anymore. We're writing reports on them. So we take all of year seven and we have them participate in a sustainability project. And this project puts them into groups and for those two weeks we kind of take away the walls of the classroom. All of their content teachers have to share the boys through. It's a massive undertaking. So, uh, but what it does allow us to do is it allows us to bring all the boys together in, a, uh, in, in one project and uh, push them through Canvas. So we serve up some of their activities through Canvas. Um, and what I would do is I would actually have this opportunity to sit down with the boys and say, right, here's the Kahoot, which was, it was ridiculous actually, uh, with 220 boys were in the room. Um, you know, but walk them through the publishing. And the great thing about this is next year I've got an entire cohort who don't need to be onboarded because we don't, and this is important to remember, we don't roll out blogs to the entire school. We wait for a teacher to request, and we do it class by class. It's not about forcing people. It's not about this is the, 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 what you have to do. Uh, and so uh, this allows us to next year just activate blogs for certain teachers, knowing that the boys have actually gone through uh, some type of onboarding. The numbers here represent there are 220 boys, 185 actually uh, submitted uh, a, a, blog, a reflection on activities in their sustainability project, which I did go through every, you know, every one of them, um, and 150 did it correctly. So, you know, we, we, we're doing pretty good on the numbers. Um, those, those who didn't uh, submit correctly, often they, it's, it's a common mistake of they were writing their post in the admin window of the blog, and they copied the admin window URL and pasted that and that page no longer exists you know, after they post. So it's an easy mistake. I actually sat down, just to get things started, I, I actually sat down and went through all of the submissions, and in a Word document I had three different comments. That is fantastic. Oh, you should consider this, and oh, you were unsuccessful in your submission. Please try again. But they got feedback, and they felt like, you know, they, they, I think it really helped them uh, quite a bit. Another thing, this is actually uh, built using Canva which is, you know, all the rage. Uh, I, I decided that uh, the best way to sort of, I'm also the e-learning leader. You like how things are trickling out as I'm talking? I'm an English teacher, e-learning leader. Uh, so as an e-learning leader, one of my jobs is, to, you know, I, I, my portfolio is Canvas on campus. That's what I manage. Um, so to make my job easier in terms of um, blogging or student reflection was I had to start to invite teachers to come to lunch. Uh, and so I just created a, a Canva uh, graphic and sent it, emailed it out to the staff. Come to lunch. I came with just the Word document of the different prompts that we had that I was using in my class and a couple of examples. So that's one thing that you'll need to consider is how you might want to help your colleagues. Uh, pretty easy. Um, this was uh, an end of the year response from one of my students, and I just I just thought it was great because he really felt um, that his uh, reflections had improved. Uh, he says, reading my first reflection is frustratingly boring and tense. <laughs> I don't think I felt comfortable expressing anything I thought in writing in a semi-formal school test. Now I'm pretty chill about complaining. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. And then finally, one of my favorites, <laughs> I'm tired of bloody reflections, which is... <laughs> so this, he internalized the fact that this is public. And it was nice to see that you know, he, uh, throughout his reflections, he was writing for the wider audience of the, of the world. I know for a fact his mother was the only one who actually uh, read it outside of, outside of the world. Um, but the date, November 29th, which is the week before school sets out, lets out for the summer. Uh, and, and he was just, he, I, 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 I don't know, beat them down so far that he was actually afraid in the next week. He said, oh, I think this is my last one. But, I have a feeling Mr. Priest is going to throw us another one next week. Um, and, I, and I, you know, read that and decided not to. Uh, but it's, it's always good to, to have, uh, and they're not going to always, you know, love what you're doing with them. Uh, and that's, that's what I got for you. Yeah? Yeah. Um, wait, we can, I can certainly take questions. I see one, two, three, four, five, if, six, if you remember that, seven. Let's go. Yeah, so I'm going to try to speak loud so everybody can hear. Uh, I, I uh, tried to implement, oh, 
I'll repeat. Ooh, mic. Mic'd up. Nope. Hello. Not on. Okay, yeah. there it is. Um, I uh, worked, uh, taught uh, at the collegiate level for a few years, and right. I, you know, dove into a science and society class and right. got things going, had them make a blog, and at the end of the semester, I realized that as a class, we had made the internet worse. Um, and and <laughs> given that it's sort of a, a broad, I think it opened up this question for me in the subsequent classes about um, the social responsibility right. of making student work public. Mm -hmm. um, and I was curious if you could speak a little bit to your experiences with that, if you've had any um, hesitation, or if there have been specific strategies you've used to ensure that these blogs are of a quality uh, that that is worth reading. Yeah, I, I went through the first two submissions uh, with a fine tooth comb. So that, that slide that I showed you, which was guidelines, was generated from the information that I saw inside of blogs. I also, in class, would show the blogs that were exemplars, that were funny, that were cool. Um, and ones that weren't, um, I didn't actually show them to the class, but I made, I made a tasks for students that said, okay, in your next version, you've got to remember this. And I, and I reminded them that you know, there should be nothing obscene. Um, this is public, and I do remind the students that they represent me, and I'm pretty good at letting them know that's a, that's a pretty high order. But it's also possible that maybe this, this idea of this being a very reflection-oriented uh, right. assignment that, that allows it to more flexibility than if you're doing yep. content. Right, and so it, what, what he's saying is uh, you know, maybe the fact that they are pretty defined by reflective, reflectiveness. That, that is actually, yeah, that has everything to do with uh, how they respond. If it was something about being self-directed, who knows what they'd be writing about. Uh, if it was content related, who knows what they'd be writing about. So yeah, it will depend on, which is why I specifically wanted reflective. Number two, who was number two? Yep. Yeah. She's got you. Do the students, that, there's a two part question, do the students continue to blog after class? Like, oh my gosh, I love blogging. And then the second question is, would you therefore have any hesitation or any, any thoughts on not dictating to them the format of the blog address? Great question, and no. The students do not tend to blog after class. Um, and I'm OK with that. It, it really depends on, remember in the beginning, the rationale, what, what your reason for it is. In fact, I try to limit the number of um, entries that we have, maybe 10 throughout the year, if that. Because I really want, my goal is for them in year 11 or 12, after they leave my class, is to look back and reflect on their learning specifically for units of study. So I have a very specific purpose. Um, I think the expectation that they will blog outside after my class is where it may fall apart um, and we both lose. And so I don't want to put that on them at all. I think by narrowing the scope and keeping it to a limited amount of entries really, really gives me better, better content. There's a number three over here, yep. Um, so you answered the question, um, how often do, do you assign blogs? But did you also um, require peer review? And if so, how did you yep. do that? So the question is, uh, did I require peer review? Um, and how often? Uh, I started to. And you saw the guidelines was, were guidelines on how to respond to each other. I feel that's phase two for me. And I know, you know what makes a blog a blog, or, or student publishing student publishing, is it has to be public. Uh, and it, it, there should be interaction and responses. Uh, so for me, again, I, I, I decided that taking, that's where the real class time would, would get eaten up, and the, and the task time that I wanted to be on other topics. I didn't really feel I could afford the time to really continue to hone and, and guide them on the responding to one another. So I just made sure that their singular responses were good enough for me. Yep. Four? Yep. How do you assess them? I noticed that in the ah. grader they were doing a great. Is it holistic? Um, do you use a rubric? That's interesting. Uh, uh, the question is, how do, how do I assess them? Uh, and it's very interesting. It's another difference between Australian and UK uh, education systems. When I arrived there, I had all these activities. I had this grade book that was just, it was fantastic. And oftentimes, in some classes, you might have one or two marks the whole term, you know, in Europe, Europe, UK, and Australia, it's all about your end assessment. So I'm really not allowed to count all the things that we do. It's not what, the, you know, it's a very old, old school style. Um, so 
I don't actually assess. I do complete and incomplete on Canvas, and I give feedback. My assessment is I actually sit and I, I, I give them feedback there. Um, you'll notice one of my screens actually did have a, a rubric on it down there. That rubric that I attached to that uh, reflection was just to get them to up their game. That was it. So I did it at a score of five, you know, based on creativity and, you know, insightfulness or what have you. But that, it wasn't used as, as assessment. It was used to bump them up a bit. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. He was next. And then, go ahead. Well, the year seven project that I showed you. So that year seven project, which was the sustainability project, they are, at the end of the school year, they're running around and they have to choose water, air, uh, recycling. They have to choose a topic and they're working on projects on awareness for sustainability. So because that existed, I said, well, we need to get them reflecting. So we start them in year seven uh, with this project and then it just depends on in year eight who wants who wants to uh, have their class blog? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Well, remember, it's technically public. So uh, the actual blog address is blogs.newington, blah, 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 slash the student number of the student. So uh, it's, it's, highly unlikely uh, that uh, other people would know how to find it. The only issues would be on, um, what do you call the um, divided families would be the only uh, issue you would have there. Um, but uh, as a re our school is pretty clear. We have a responsibility to, to, to be realistic in our teaching and online publishing is very real and it's a part of uh, an expectation that we would have them do and their universities would have them do so on and so forth. I think there was Yes, sorry, and then. Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's only in the Newington College Commons, sorry. Yes, I can, I will do that, you got it. Yes, <laughs> yes, I will do that. And I'll put it on the community, right? Is that where you, right? Yeah, I'll do that, you got it. Did you have a question? Yeah, mine was a follow up. Um, you said that the, the blogs are hard to find because you have to know the student number. Yep. Do the students make the, the WordPress blogs they start, do they make those private or how does that work? Sometimes I try, his question is uh, they're hard to find the actual number, so do the students actually make it private as well? Uh, you're able to make a private post even though, even though you know, I'm the final arbiter and I always make it unprivate if they do. I mean, it's. They're not allowed, because I want the students in the class to read each other's as well. So they're not allowed to actually make it private. I think I have time for about one more. It's about three minutes still. Yes, ma'am. Um, a little off topic, but the sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, I'm, I'm wondering if, I don't know if it's public or not. It is. is it public? <laughs> well, it's public. Uh, if you... I don't even know how you get to it because I. Uh, there it is. Take that bit.ly URL down and you should have access to it. This is being recorded, right? Great. Any other final questions, thoughts, comments? No. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So what she's saying is that, they, uh, that at her school, uh, they actually have the parents sign a release for students to blog. Uh, we do not. Um, it's a part of our school life. So there's an expectation that they... Yeah, you don't have fur pus, so you're... I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Sounds like a fuzzy little animal thingy. What? A furpa? It's, it's the U.S. law that would prevent you okay. from the student. Yeah. Yes. The last time I was teaching high school here was in the late 90s. It's free and open. Let's yeah. just teach. Uh, and then I went to education technology and went back into teaching. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. For, uh, any, any final? Yes, then we'll go.
Yeah. Right. Yes. So her comment is that what a great way to start a positive uh, digital footprint and awareness of how, and that's a part of our, our digital awareness that we do with the kids. Thank you guys for coming. I'm, I'm glad to.